Welcome to Friday. Uh oh, it's Friday 13th, the 13th of Friday, June 2025. Your day with the podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Feel the energy of Converse County. Explore Douglas's Railroad Heritage, Ayers Natural Bridge, and the Jackalope Legend. Glen Rock, both scenic trails, dinosaur history, and small town charm. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Well, severe weather today. We did have quite a bit of severe weather in many areas yesterday and really the day before, but this is kind of a day where the risk is elevated over a lot of territory. So this is a day where don't take the Porsche convertible out of the garage. This is uh, one of those days where I think someone's going to get some pretty good hail. I can't tell you where, but June, especially the middle of June, we've seen it a million times. This is the time of month and the time of year when we do have an elevated hail risk in the western high plains and Rockies. This is something to keep in mind. Take the beater, not the Porsche. Now we're going to see this long stretch along and east of the Continental Divide today. And it's going to go from Montana all the way down into the southern Rockies and the southern plains. And uh, we're going to continue the weekend afternoon and evening thunderstorm pattern along and east of the divide. It will probably have some strong thunderstorms to contend with Saturday and Sunday as well. Maybe just not as widespread. If you're west of the Continental Divide, it's a real yawner. There's nothing going on. The air is going to be dry and a lot more stable. You got to be near the divider east of it to see the action. And temperatures will be warm, summer-like through the week and into the weekend through this upcoming weekend and into early next week. Some really interesting patterns emerging in the long term. I tell you, the, the long term is throwing a lot of different things at us. And uh, we've already talked a little bit about this week and we'll show you a little bit more as we take a look at the second part, especially late June towards early July. There's a beautiful shot. This is the really only pastoral scene you're gonna see because of all the severe weather and the big thunderstorms. Going to show a lot of pictures from the last couple of days. Beautiful shot there. It's like, I don't know how Carl gets the antelope to pose, but he's really good. He's the antelope whisperer, I guess. Great shot here of building clouds and thunderstorms. Now, this is from Wednesday. I've got a lot of Wednesday photos because I've been traveling and haven't been able to record the podcast at my normal time. So we've got to have a little bit of a backlog here. But uh, this is a good example when you're traveling across the region. This is earlier in the day near Riverton. And then the same photographer up headed to Cody. Beautiful double rainbow there. Wow, that's a beautiful shot there, Rob. And then beautiful wildflowers in the sagebrush through the Wind River Canyon. There's also another pose. Can you spot it in the photo there? Another uh, animal just really hamming it up for the camera there. And a lot of mammatus, as we see, I've got a lot of mammatus pictures here over the last couple of days, and we're going to see more of those. So if you're a cloud watcher, if you're a storm chaser, uh, you're going to see a lot of images like this. Here's a shot from the Bighorn Basin from earlier in the week with those showers and thunderstorms that rolled on through on the 11th. And then, again, this is another photo from the 11th. And then down into New Mexico, this is a good example of what happens in the southwestern United States before the monsoon gets going. You get the showers to build up, but you get Virga. The clouds want to rain, but they just, that rain just can't reach the ground, at least anything that's going to be measurable. Along the western slope, kind of seeing the clouds building along and east of the divide while you're going to be dry, and there's a good example there. Showers and thunderstorms will kind of take on this look today. As we see a shot from Jan there from the day before and from yesterday, morning sun, then all of a sudden you, you get the heat going and then the clouds really start to begin to boil and come together. Well, the Cody area has been able to pick up some good rain here le recently with these showers and thunderstorms. Another beautiful rainbow shot. And even the Casper area has had some strong thunderstorms roll through, as you can see there from a shot from Donna there in Mills. When we take a look at the weather today, we talked about at the beginning of the podcast here about a high and elevated risk of severe weather. And uh, when we take a look at where it's going to be, it's going to be a lot in the same areas. Now, we have a shelf cloud here up on the Pine Ridge in Nebraska. You'll get this shelf-like looking cloud when you get a line of thunderstorms. And when you see a shelf cloud like this, and if it's approaching, 
Well, you're likely going to be looking at the thunderstorms moving through. Now, they may be dissipating, they may be growing, but shelf clouds really start to show up this time of year. I guess Douglas is the lightning capital of the world. <laughs> Douglas has seen a lot of thunderstorm activity, another lightning shot from Air Cup in Douglas with yesterday's activity. And for those of you in southeastern Wyoming yesterday, you probably had your phone go off with an alert as there was a tornado warning. This is a very weak funnel up by Chugwater yesterday. A lot of storm chasers will be out and about today as we'll see the showers and thunderstorms get going. Now this is from my spam box. Sometimes the spam folder catches the photos. Sorry if that happens, if you don't see your photo. Another great shot there of Kelvin Hemholtz clouds in the Bighorn Basin from last Friday. You can see the seat firefighting aircraft there. They're on the ground, which means good, not much fire activity so far this season. Satellite photos, we're back to being able to show those to you again. Here's your high pressure along in west of the divide. East of the divide, there's plenty of moisture. So that just is going to be the story as we roll through the next several days. Dry west, thunderstorms and warm in the east. And if we look at climatology, I mentioned at the beginning, this is when you just see a really high probability of severe weather backing westward into the front range of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, into the panhandles here. It's just the time of year where climatology says you're going to have an elevated risk. So where we're going to be here at noon today, it's subtle. You really don't see much going on, but there are little disturbances in the flow here that will be arriving during the course of the day today and precipitable water, moisture that's along and east of the divide is deep. And anywhere you, it, where it is white to green, you're going to see uh, the availability for the showers and thunderstorms to tap into moisture. Doesn't mean it'll rain on you. Just means where the deeper moisture is available. You see that clustering up here in south central Montana. And if we just kind of follow where the green is, it's in this area right here where things are going to pop. So this is what the thunderstorm pattern will be looking like by late this afternoon and evening. And you can see all the way from southern Canada all the way into the mountains of Mexico here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop. And then we're going to have some strong thunderstorms go into the evening and nighttime hours. So basically, you initiate the thunderstorms along the east slopes of the Rockies. They develop, they grow, then they head east, and they kind of get themselves organized into clusters. So we're going to have a cluster up here in southern Montana, far northern Wyoming, across Nebraska into Kansas. And we're going to have severe weather. And this arch here of yellow is where I think we really run the risk of strong winds, possible tornadoes, and hail today. This is where the tornado risk is. So southeastern Wyoming, that Nebraska Panhandle, extreme northeastern Colorado. This is the wind risk of very strong gusty winds, and this is the hail risk. So you can see there's a lot of real estate covered by this, and boy, I've seen this pattern before, this bow shape. And one thing, let me go back here to explain a little bit about the concern for hail. When you have a lot of moisture, a lot of high relative humidity along and east of the divide, and when you have dry air west of the divide, what will happen sometimes, and this is common in June, is the thunderstorms as they grow here, as the day wears on, some of the dry air gets entrained into the atmosphere. And when you get a thunderstorm that builds, if it entrains a little dry air, you get some evaporation as the thunderstorm builds. That makes the atmosphere colder. And if it's colder in that thunderstorm environment, well, the chances of hail get a little bit higher. So when you have moist east, dry west, you mix those two together, strong daytime heating, and boy, this is when you get that severe weather. So we'll need to watch out for that today. This is for Saturday. So again, we're going to have this arch again of strong thunderstorm activity Saturday, pushing a little bit further east into the plains. And you can see we have the same risk. We don't have yellow. We might end up seeing it. But Saturday, it's a little bit more to the east, this bow of thunderstorms, but it's still there. And this is Sunday. So see a recurring pattern here? And that's exactly how it's going to go through the weekend. As we go into early next week, we have another strong wave coming in. 
This will cause showers and thunderstorms Monday and Tuesday. Will be slightly cooler and drier behind this wave as it heads east for the middle to the end of the week. This deeper low up here is something we've been talking about. When we get to late next week and next weekend, this is for next Saturday the 21st, an interesting configuration begins to develop. This is a pretty strong low for the third week of June coming in the Pacific Northwest. That's, that's a pretty cool, moist looking system that's going to kind of want to come in and sit there and not necessarily dive into here like it would in winter or spring. But this high, you see this high getting established in East Texas? This is, a, this, this is where summer highs want to be a lot of times. And what they do is they form here and sometimes they're, they go this way, sometimes they go this way, sometimes they settle into here as we go into July and August. But this configuration at, over time, starting next Saturday, then the days following continues. So look at the temperature anomaly in the West, in the Pacific Northwest in California by next weekend. It's gonna get hot if this pattern develops because basically air gets pushed in from the deserts and you downslope while this lows up here. So you get really hot on the plains and east of the divide, much cooler here in the Pacific Northwest. So this heat dome, you know, part of the summer heat that begins to build, then look what happens by the following Wednesday. That high shifts east. Now let's follow these wind barbs. The clockwise flow around the high is showing the winds at 18,000 feet coming up and doing this. The counterclockwise circulation on the low kind of help enhances it. So what you start to see in this configuration is air moving out of the Gulf, wanting to come into Mexico, then through Arizona, New Mexico into the Rockies. What does that look like? Well, this is right at the end of June. So when we put that on top, of the pattern, then we look at where the precipitable water is forecasted to be. Now, this is way out here, okay? This is for display purposes only. This is for discussion purposes because this is so far out. But if we do see this pattern develop, look at the precipitable water in Mexico, then coming around and coming into the Four Corners region, then getting all the way up to Interstate 80 and Interstate 90 here, right around the 25th to the last weekend, the weekend of uh, the last weekend of June into early July. So this basically jump starts the monsoon. Now, do we have the support from the sea surface temperature anomalies? We've showed you this before. We need to be at 26 for the, the monsoon to really get going. So the area of 26 is growing here. It's plenty warm right here. We're just waiting for this patch to fill in. And it likely will because the desert Southwest is gonna be hot and dry here over the next seven to 10 days. And the sea surface temperature anomaly is really backing that up. So this warmth is developing, this warmth is here. So if we get that configuration that we showed you right here, especially right here by the end of June into early July, that'll get the monsoon off to an early start. We'll see, but it's certainly interesting and certainly something that we're gonna keep an eye on.